Now, the other two I think that are in danger are Kirsten and Jared. But if Suri works her usual social game magic on Big Brother like she has done on Survivor in the past, then I think that Jared could be okay and that could put Kirsten in trouble. And that could put Kirsten in trouble. I can't let you guys down like that, America. Not so early. Turn on the first things I'm talking about. She's just jumping and all these different moves. She's gonna be the mess. She's the mess. I mean, right off the bat, she's a she's she's coming up with theories on this person did this and this. And it's like, where where are you getting that from? Yeah. But your favorite twenty five year old is gonna make it through this situation that I kind of put myself in. To be honest, like if it isn't the consequences of my own actions, that I'm gonna get off that block. Well, from when I'm recording this, we are about uh, a few hours shy from 24 hours of live feeds for Big Brother 25, and it was a pretty decent first day of feeds. Nothing too crazy, though. We do have to talk about some mini spiraling already happening within the house. Uh, it is Big Brother season, and I didn't even realize that my girlfriend has a plush dolls of Big Brother 24's Amira from last season. Like, the teeth are impeccable and it looks just like Amira. Now, uh, let's talk about Big Brother 25, though. We are on a new season. Thankfully, Big Brother 24 is long gone. Coming into the feeds last night, it started uh, with, it seemed like we got to see an, uh, the making of an alliance, calling themselves the Phalanx Five, which was Luke, Matt, Riley, Jared, and Kirsten, but that would uh, be something that would not bode well for Kirsten later in the night. I talked about yesterday how I felt like uh, after the premiere that it would be Kirsten in trouble, and uh, my gut is usually right about most things like this, and it was right about the first 24 hours of feeds. Kirsten putting herself in trouble. It didn't start so bad for her though. She showed off that she has a really good social game. She was able to connect one-on-one -on -one with a lot of people, so it seemed. Matt was one of the first people we saw her with on feeds. There was a lot of people online rooting for that being a swirl interracial relationship. And it started well. Matt was opening up to her about his uh, hearing problems and his health issues with that. So it really felt like Kristen was off to a good start socially. Because unlike a lot of the other young people last night they, that were in a, a large group in the kitchen or a large group in the game room throughout the night, Kristen would go away from that and go to smaller groups and talk, or talk to people one-on-one, -on -one, which I think makes for a really good social game. So she was showing that she has that in her uh, doing that. Uh, she also did that with Izzy, but Izzy is one of the people that kind of helped her downfall in, in going there. Uh, but yeah, a lot of last night, before we continue with Kristen, was uh, the, the young people together in a bigger group and then the older people off in a smaller group a lot at times. Uh, Suri and Felicia a lot uh, of, of talking together. They were together a lot though and they continued to be together a lot though. And I think they will eventually be seen as a duo within that house as the two older women, the two older black women in the game. Uh, but I also liked we, we saw Bowie try and kind of go over to the older folks as well. She's another older player. Even Cameron, he's not quite as old as the others. He's around my age. Uh, we're not quite that old yet. No offense, boo-boo. Um, just kidding, boo-boo, just kidding. Uh, but he also was talking to the, the older women at one point about uh, her... Cameron and Felicia had a lot in common with Felicia was in the Air Force, Cameron was in the Army, so they had a connection there. But back to Kristen, or Kirsten. Kirsten was uh, doing a lot of those connections, like I, I said. 
But she was rubbing Izzy and Jared the wrong way, and Izzy and Jared are close, which we will get to. And it kind of mostly fell apart when Jared told Sari, his mother, about the Phalanx Five Alliance. And then when uh, Kirsten was confronted about it, Kirsten did not do a very good job of, like, she also told about the Alliance, but would then not open up about said alliance to Suri or Felicia. And at first, Suri and Felicia were thinking about creating an all black women alliance with the, the four black women in the house and doing a brigade, brigade type deal slash cookout type deal of each person goes and connects with a, another person. And uh, it's like an eight person alliance. Uh, but the, that's the core four. But then Kirsten went and did a little too much talking, unfortunately, and that is what now has her uh, her back against the wall. She was able to see this in the morning that she may have done a little too much last night. I, I think Kirsten has a lot of strategy in her, but it was night one and maybe she did a little too much. But then at the same time, she's on the block I don't know, it, it's very hard for me to judge her on this because she's on the block and because I liked her social game of talking to people one-on-one -on -one or in smaller groups. I think that is very smart, actually. However, then when the Alliance is outed and you also out the Alliance and then you don't give info about that Alliance, you're looking untrustworthy to a lot of people. And then Felicia is also on the block with you and she's going around throwing uh, Kirsten way under every single bus to everyone. Felicia is definitely uh, putting, she's growing the target on Kirsten by the hour, honestly. Suri, however, wants Corey out. Corey and Suri had a moment. Corey's brother was on Survivor and Corey uh, was talking to kind of Danning uh, Suri a little bit, kind of fanning out with her, saying she wants, well, Corey was telling Suri that uh, he wants Suri to have a good season this year, wants Suri to do good on this season, but Suri doesn't seem to trust Corey, and I think that Suri might try and continue to slowly put the target on Corey this week. Once again, Corey, Felicia, or Felicia, uh, uh, and then Kirsten and Jared are the four people on the block. Honestly, out of those four, I want either Corey to go or I think I want Jared to go. Um, neither of them are entertaining me yet, whereas Felicia and Kirsten are entertaining me because separately, they are both messes in their own way, and that's what makes good feeds for me. But there's also strategy to both of them as well, which I appreciate. Uh, you know, Suri and her son Jared have had some mini talks. The house does not realize they are related. And I see a lot of people online saying they look so much alike, everybody's going to know. I don't think they look that alike, and I don't think anybody's going to be the first person to say, hey, wait a minute, those two black people look almost identical and they really don't in my opinion of course they're they have a, a, a slight mother and son resemblance but it's not super strong uh but uh izzy does actually realize that uh sari and jared are mother and son i doubted her me and alex talked about doubting her story that she she just started watching big brother at the beginning of the year and watched it two times over in seven months and apparently she probably watched survivor two times over in seven months as well she's watched a lot of reality tv uh, i guess to figure all these things out but uh it seems izzy and jared we saw him at the end of the episode pinky promising something and for now izzy is keeping it a secret that sari and jared are related and seems to be working with both of them for now. That's a, a big thing that Izzy will be holding though. And I do hope at some point in the season, 
it comes out that Jared and Suri are related. And Izzy might be the one to uh, drop that bomb. She is... uh, She has some good qualities as a player. But I don't know if she is totally a great player. First of all, somebody that... uh, obsessed about Big Brother to watch all the seasons twice over in seven months gives addictive personality to me or I guess more so obsessive personality to me because I do see her being this way. I do think she's going to be an obsessive player and when she has a target she's going to totally have that tunnel vision we see a lot in these games with people when they just want to get one person out they get the tunnel vision and their their game starts to kind of pull away from being good because that tunnel vision just keeps connecting them to that other player that they have tunnel vision for. I don't really like that so much. Right now she has that tunnel vision with Kirsten. Um and it's it's giving me now let me let me say this a little not too harsh because I don't mean it completely. It's giving me Paloma vibes from last uh, season. Now, look, Paloma was and probably still is mentally unstable, and I don't think Izzy is at all. However, last season, strategy wise and game wise, Paloma was getting information from Taylor. She was getting accurate information from Ta- Taylor, but Paloma was going in, around and throwing Taylor under the bus just to put a target on somebody when she didn't really have to do so. She was getting accurate information, but was just wanting to go against it out of jealousy, which is what that was. In Izzy's case, I don't think it's jealousy. I don't really know what it is. I think maybe it's just maybe a case of playing a little too hard too fast or something, because I don't know what her reason would be. She's getting information from Kirsten. Kirsten is giving her information. I don't think it's smart to go around and, and targeting a person this early in the game anyway, that's giving you information. You want a person in the game that gives you information, certainly in the early game at the very least. If you want to stab him in the back later because you need to, that's fine. But so early in the game, I don't think Izzy is doing something smart here. She's getting a lot of credit online for being a good player. She has a lot of good qualities. She's clearly observant when it comes to the Jared and Suri connection. She has powerful info there. She's good at getting info. I just think that as a player, early in the game anyway, she is not a player that knows what to do with that info uh, or play that info right. Right now she's doing the basic thing that a lot of bad players do early in a game and they, they take in this info and target the person giving you info it's just too early in the game for that, in my opinion. So Izzy isn't doing so good, in my opinion, in that re- regard. I think uh, her social game is is better than I expected, to say the least. Strategy-wise, though, I ain't seeing it right now. Uh, so that's the only thing she has in common with Paloma. Not uh, anything too crazy. So it seems as though Kirsten and Corey are the two biggest targets of the four right now. I don't think producers actually would want Kirsten to go this early because we know this is a a production that is obsessed with showmances. And uh, I feel like only Kirsten or Riley would give the production a showmance this season. Maybe America. America is the third option. America, so far as a player, also pretty decent socially. Very observant as well. There was a moment when she recognized all the men just got up and walked off together and commented on that. So I think America is going to have her moments of being strategic this season. But yeah, those are the only three possibilities of a social. I mean, of a showman's. And America, I only see it barely. Riley's very good at connecting with the men. She is in with a lot of the men. However, it gives me very much um, friend zone vibes uh, with with Riley. I don't see it as actually flirtatious. She's a very goofy person. And I, I not only see her friend zoning the guys, I kind of see them friend zoning her because of 
the way she is. But maybe one of those will eventually lead to a, a showmance. She is very close to Jag, I would say, so far. Her, Jag, and Matt uh, have become very close, which is a very scary trio, honestly. I think all three of those players are going to be good in their own way. Riley's very social. Uh, I think Jag and Matt will both be very strategic. I think Jag is very well-rounded. Jag is doing what he said he was going to do. And I don't know if a lot of other people are doing so yet. I mean, maybe Nicole. I, I see her being this, uh, being loved right now under the radar. Maybe I'll talk about it a little more later if I remember. She's She has the ability to possibly later do the politician thing down the line. But so far, only Jag is the, the person doing what they said they would do. You know, we have Felicia who said she was going to come in here and not lie about her age and not talk about her retirement checks or her retirement in general, she's already done all that. Everybody already knows that. Now, Alex, when we talked to Alex on this channel a few days ago, he pointed out very accurately that it, she shouldn't lie about her age with this cast. And maybe when, when she saw that there was another older woman in Suri and there's other older men as well, that she didn't necessarily need to lie about her age and her, or her retirement, and she hasn't. But Jack said he was going to come out and... Uh, make it seem like he's this airhead that doesn't know too much about the game and I think he is accomplishing that so far now he and Riley are together a lot and he Matt and Riley are together a lot so that could eventually paint a target on them because they all seem like they are a possible alliance but other than that, I think he is doing what he set out to do so far. And I'm, I'm very happy about that because I think Jag has the potential to be a very fun, bloodthirsty player down the line. Now, Riley also went and won HOH. She is now the HOH. And her HOH power in this first round with the, the twist is that she can now take two of the four nominees off the block. And it seems as though she, she's probably going to fall for what Suri wants. Suri wants Corey and uh, Kirsten to be the ones remaining on the block. Felicia's already are gone to the HOH, Riley, and thrown Kirsten under the bus to the HOH. I, I think Jared has already kind of done... The same thing. Jared is also very close to uh, Matt and Luke and uh, Jag. So they kind of have a bro thing going there, of course. I will say about Jared, what I don't like about his game is he, there's no subtleness to it whatsoever. <laughs> when, he, when he's talking to people, I don't see it as subtle at all. He's talking to the guys, which he's very sociable and he's very good at connecting with people. But when it comes to the strategy, he's saying like, we need to pull an older person into the group. Maybe somebody like Suri, it's not subtle at all. Now, I don't think anybody's picking up on the fact that this is his mother yet, but um, they might eventually because he is not subtle about things at all. Uh, it's one of the reasons I wouldn't mind Jared going, but Jared's not going to go home. The, the Big Brother's not going to let their big twist go out week one with Jared and Suri in the same house. There is too much potential drama down the line with that. I don't see Jared going home at all. It will be either Corey or uh, Kirsten most likely. Felicia's uh, social game is ass. It's very much ass. Um, she's a curmudgeon, which I've talked about. I, I, I do these old show things, reviews on this channel lately, where I talk about Bewitched and I, the, and I talk about um, I Love Lucy and how I like the curmudgeonly characters on those shows, usually a male on those shows, with their funny one-liners being a curmudgeon. Felicia has some of those as well, which make me laugh. 
so she is almost a type of curmudgeon that I like. My problem with her is that she doesn't know when to stop uh, talking crap, I guess, about certain things or certain people, which can get annoying after a while. I don't dislike her yet, but socially, she's only been hanging around Sari. Her entire social game right now, it's only been a day, but it revolves around Sari and what Sari's doing and who Sari's close to. She doesn't seem to be going after her own connections. Like, I felt like in the conversation between her, Cameron, and Sari, that it was more so Felicia and Cameron bonding because they have the past being in the armed forces. Uh, but then Sari doesn't trust Cameron, so now it doesn't seem like Felicia trusts Cameron. And maybe she should. I mean, Cameron has his own flaws, but I don't know. I think Sari is doing what we expected so far. She is putting on a show of how to be not only a great social player, but a good, good uh, strategic player. I feel like I've given her a lot of credit for being the, the great social player that she is. But I think what gets lost a lot in Suri's game on her multiple Survivor seasons is she is fantastic at strategy as well. And I feel like we're already seeing that. She already kind of clocked the Scary Room Alliance, which was made up of Cameron, Blue, Matt, Jag, and Riley. And she's already kind of using that when talking to other people, especially even Kirsten, about those five possibly being in an alliance. Sari does a really good thing of turning people against others so that she could bring them closer to her. And I think she's going to continue to do that a lot as this game goes on. And I'm going to love every minute of it because <laughs> it's just a great... Only the greats can truly pull that off socially. And she's already doing so. So I've loved watching Suri on feeds for the past day, getting to see her game up close and personal and live. It's already been fun and it's only been a day and she's already putting on a show. Um, I think that's all of the main points I wanted to go over. I guess a few more points on some of the other players I didn't really touch upon so far. Uh, Haisam. Uh, is connecting with the older players as well. He's had some good talks with Suri and uh, Felicia. I think he's just glad that there are other older players that he can connect with and he is doing that. Bowie, I mean, she's also trying to connect with the older players, but like I talked about with her already in my uh, cast assessment is that she is who I didn't want her to be and didn't think I was gonna like. She's just kind of happy to be there with no real gaming and no real strategy. And you could kind of say the same for Red. I feel like both of them are there to be sideshow characters for the episodes, just to give us a bunch of wasting time in the episode, which you know the this production team loves to do. They love to give us bad episodes. I've already had comments on it in my first YouTube video about how bad the, uh, the the competitions were. They were just bad television. And I feel like that's what we're going to uh, get out of some of these characters. It's funny because you already have a lot of Big Brother fans wanting to turn on Sari because she's a Survivor player and they don't really know who she is, I guess, or whatever. I feel like it's uh, the typical kind of thing where when Big Brother players came on Survivor, a lot of us Survivor fans didn't want to see them there because what are these Big Brother players doing on this show? They suck. Caleb did suck on both shows. So I didn't like Caleb on Survivor. Hayden, however, played a pretty good Survivor game, I would say. He was a Big Brother winner. He came into Survivor and played very well. And I gave him the credit that he deserved for that. I don't feel like Big Brother fans want, right now want to give Suri credit because they either don't know her game or they are intimidated by her game. And how can you blame them? I mean, this Big Brother has become a show with too much cheesiness, uh, not enough strategy whatsoever, 
And you, you see that in the competitions from last night. You see that in the editing all the time. I don't hate that the show doesn't take itself seriously, but they go overboard with the cheesiness. So I could understand why Big Brother fans are intimidated by somebody from Survivor coming in and already uh, whooping a little ass, if I do say so myself. Uh, and this is coming from somebody who hates 10 out of the last 12 Survivor seasons, frankly. Cameron is who I thought he was already. He's not socializing very well. I mean, he did last night on night one, I will give him credit. Like I already talked about with uh, Suri and uh, Felicia. But today he woke up and seemed very irritated by all the socializing going on around him. I talked about him being from a small town. I think he's going to continue to be overwhelmed by all of these extroverts in the house. And then there's Blue and Nicole. M Nicole's going by Mimi from a lot of people. Th those two are very under the radar for me. I think Nicole's doing better socially than Blue is. I think uh, Nicole is connecting with far more people than Blue is. I think Blue is kind of right now just uh, talking to certain people that she wants an alliance with, which I guess would be the scary room, like I talked about earlier. Whereas Nicole is connecting more personally with people, at least. She's doing a good personal connection social game so far while being under the radar. I don't think under the radar is bad for either of them right now. It's still very early in the game. There could always be a point, though, when being too under the radar makes you an easy target. But right now, I don't think they are. Uh, but yeah, I like the cast so far. Nothing to complain about, thank God. Uh, Kirsten is doing a lot of kicking herself in the ass, like the, the challenge she lost last night. She is messy, for sure, but she has a good social game. I do feel like she can pull herself out of this. There is a lot of days to go, and, and likely a veto to be played as well. So, yeah, I am on board this uh, this season right now. I like everybody still. Nobody is too much on my nerves. I don't like how Red and Bowie are kind of likely just going to be there to do a whole lot of nothing and maybe be coasters. That's the vibe I'm getting from them. But other than that, nothing to complain about. And uh, yeah, Sari, it's been fun watching her play already. She is already putting on a show of how to be a mastermind of socializing and strategy.